So, as I say, we're kind of just coming out of phase one. We're uh, halfway through what we call phase two. And uh, this is where it starts to get interesting. Phase one was we piloted on a set of tame users, if you will. So these were uh, a relatively high-skilled team in London, um, agile-focused. So we took Scrum pretty much out of the box. Again, one of the nice things about LTC has some of this stuff out of the box. We took that out of the box, stick it in, great, up and running very quickly. Source control, a bit, bit of a few more challenges, but up and running very quickly. Then we also took some of the other teams from some of the other technology streams, chose a team that was split, a functional group that was split geographically between London and Chennai, got them up and running. So that's kind of where we are. We also have some of our technology teams up in Hemel Hempstead. They're live on it as well. This was nice. It meant that we got some quick wins. It meant that everybody felt good about it. It meant the project got some momentum, got some visibility, and people wanted it to work rather than tackling it the other way, where we just piss off loads of users. So now, we're at that stage. We have a big rump of our user base down in Chennai. Some of them are already live on it. Some of them have seen their colleagues live on it, and they're starting to say, oh, what's that? Actually, yeah, that is better than what we're using at the moment. So they want to move. So our next challenge, well, I say our, oh, I mean Martin, who's the guy who's been running the project for me, um, our next challenge is to take our phase two plan, which is to get everybody live by the end of the year. So that's important because we have our GA release cycle that I, I alluded to earlier. So we need to get those guys live uh, by the end of the year, which takes us to about 750 users. So then, going forward into next year, well, we bought some more licenses because we have projected growth uh, into, into 2010. So by the end of 2010, we're looking at getting about well, 1,200 or so users live on this thing. Um, and it also means that we're actually going to allow our customers direct access into this thing. Now, obviously, we're going to restrict exactly what they can see. Um, but the goal here is, again, to open up and be a little bit more transparent to be a bit more friendly with our customers so they can see not only their bugs and their issues, but everything else that's out. And if it's fixed, how they get their update, how they get their fix. So not only have we gone through this, this process, but as we went through it, actually articulating how we do things made us actually take a step back. It's very easy, oh, okay. yeah, be as, as we were saying earlier, to just carry on doing things the way you've always done it. Because, well, it works, doesn't it? But when you then explain it to somebody, as you're explaining it, it makes you question, oh, why do we do it like that? That sounds a bit weird. So it's made us consider other parts of the software development lifecycle. OK, so I'm, a, I'm very aware that I'm between you and coffee. So. Um, just to finish up on a, on a few lessons learned. The sales guys tell me that we should drink our own champagne. The developers say, we eat our own dog food. I'll, I'll let them decide which side of that, that divide you're on. One of the things that we found really valuable is to try and treat yourselves <coughs> as you treat one of your customers, <coughs> rather how you would want your customer to idea, act. Yes. Don't just do what you do in the same, in, do the same old thing in a new system. Don't bring across all of the data you had. Why? <coughs> when we first started this project, the support teams said, yeah, we need 400 fields on customer. Why? Do you really need 400 fields? So I said, OK, you can have 20. So we compromised a little. Not much on my part. Um, I'm not quite sure what the number is, but it, it was nowhere near 400. So, do compromise, but do treat yourself. Learn, learn the lessons yourselves that you wish that your customers had. One of those lessons was to always be, or try to be, on the latest release of the software. Running a development shop, it's always really painful when a customer says, oh, we've got this major problem, it's this, that, and the other, why haven't you fixed it? And you say, well, we have, but it's fixed in this release. Why don't you upgrade? 
So we try to learn that lesson ourselves and keep on that on that release. So I think we were live on, on version two of RTC. I think it was two days after GA. Yeah, two days. So uh, we had it in beta for a while first, I should, I should say. Um, build, a, build a relationship with Rational. That really helps. If you understand the people, you understand the business, you understand their vision of what they want to do with this platform, it helps you implement the, implement the system. We got services from the IBM folks to help us implement it. That worked really well. And I think um, both teams have learned a lot from, from this project. Um, yeah. And uh, make sure you work out exactly physically how you're going to deploy this thing so you don't get surprised later. And then last but not least, one of the things I didn't mention earlier, I don't know if you counted how many of those systems we had. Pretty much every single one of them had a different login. So now we use our standard Active Directory, that's our corporate standard. We hook up with RTC through that. One login, one password, it's just so much easier. Thank you very much.